Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now, six, eight weeks ago, I made a series of videos on some ancient sites in Turkey. And one site I did not talk about was ancient Hattusis, the Hittite capital, coming from a little over 3,000 years ago. And you never know what you're going to find when you start researching something. Sometimes uh, the standard model of history has it pretty accurately detailed in a uh, historical context. And other times you will find maybe subjects that aren't really approached by the history that we have been taught. But these are the ruins of Hatt Hattusis, I believe it is pronounced. And this was the ancient Hittite capital. These are very impressive ruins and they look a little different than other ruins I have found that stretch back a uh, thousand years or at least a few thousand years and they are still very well identified and here is a main structure at Hattusis and this is kind of on the top of a hill good spot to have an ancient main structure in your city and here you see the shaded area there is obviously a corner here and we are going to go over and this is what it looks like down on ground level obviously man-made pretty impressive construction over a natural hill which is common at other ancient sites from around the world and on that main or in that main structure there is a chamber with a little passageway cut cutting through the middle of this main structure at Hattusis let's give you a brief look at it here how it was constructed obviously some very good sized boulders and this is what it looks like today now this is that structure from overhead and that passageway it seems goes pretty much from north to south so it is not lined aligned to the sun on the equinox that is a question that popped into my head right away but over on the west side of the city is probably the most famous landmark in this ancient city and this is it overhead we're going to jump over to a website this is uncharted ruins blogspot.com and the title of this is the hittites mysterious people of a thousand gods and i will just start reading it says until no more than one century ago very little was known of the hittites people shrouded a mystery still the hittites were no minor civilization in antiquity the hittite empire stretched as far as the bosphorus and that is where the Aegean flows into the Black Sea, and what is is uh, and what is today's Syria. It was a major superpower of the ancient Near East, which frequently clashed with other superpowers of the area, most notably Egypt. A large number of letters are known from various sites in Turkey and Egypt, which prove intense diplomatic relationship between Egypt and the Hittites. The first peace treaty in history, of which we possess both copies, was signed between the Hittite king. Muatali and Ramses II of Egypt after the Battle of Kadesh in Syria. Oddly enough, the Hittites were frequently mentioned in the Bible and even given, a, given credit as the original founders of Jerusalem. It is also said in Genesis 23 2 that Abraham bought a cave in Hebron in what is today's Palestine to bury his wife Sarah from the Hittites. And uh, that all can be taken with a grain of salt. It says, even though it is doubtful whether the biblical Hittites were the same as the Anatolian people called by the same name, this, however, led to a historical misrepresentation of the Hittites as a people somehow ancestor to the more recent Canaanites. It says, when the first European travelers of the early 19th century found the strange mon monumental ruins in Turkey, they were puzzled as to the identity of the mysterious builders, which also appeared to possess hieroglyphic writing unlike any other known from antiquity. It was only towards the end of the 19th century that the ruins of Bagazkoi were finally identified with those of Hattasus, the ancient capital of the Hittites, which had until then only been known from epigraphic writings. Perhaps one of the reasons why so little was known of the Hittites in modern times was the sudden and catastrophic destruction which befell their empire as most of the ancient Near East towards the end of the Bronze Age about 1200 BC. The fall of Hattasus, which was never rebuilt, also marked the end of the Hittite Empire. 
It seems that Hattasus and all its inhabitants perished in a great catastrophe whose exact nature is still the subject of much speculation. Consider this description of the ruins as reported after the 1931 to 1939 excavations by its excavator. Wherever we set our spade, we found unmistakable signs of a devastating fire that had consumed everything that would burn, reduced brick brickwork to a reddened masses of slag, and made limestone blocks explode in fragments. Sometimes one got the impression that the materials that happened to be in the buildings could never have been enough to raise such a blaze, such a heat. No thing, not a house, not a temple, not a hut, escaped the work of destruction. And going on here, it says, Hattusis was not the only city to be destroyed by fire, as other cities of central Anatolia appeared to have met the same fate. Alakahoyuk, some 25 kilometers to the north, also perished in a fiery catastrophe. Hittite palaces at Masat at Fragton, as well as the fortified citadel of Karaogan, near present-day Ankara, were also burned to the ground in a catastrophic fire. The end of the great Hittite empire was complete. There was no sign of Hittite reoccupation at Hatt Hattasus after its destruction, and the site remained a desolate ruin until its rediscovery in modern times. It is perhaps no chance about the same time that the great centers of the Near East were abruptly incinerated. Burton great flames were in the ancient cities of Palestine and the fortresses of Syria, and even the Egyptian cities of the Delta succumbed and returned to smoking ruins. And I guess there is no proof that these all happened in the same, you know, because of the same cause. But it is, I guess, a possibility. It says, it is difficult to imagine what invading army could have overthrown in a space of years an empire so powerful as to compete with Egypt for control over the Near East at its height, less than one century before. And even more difficult it is to imagine what enemy could have so easily penetrated into that city of Hattasus, defended as it was by the strongest defensive walls of any Bronze Age city in the Near East or elsewhere in the ancient world, in such a manner as to lay complete destruction over the whole of the Hittite Empire. There are even those among historians who suggest it was no invading army to engulf all of the ancient Near East in flames, but rather a fire from heaven, perhaps a large meteorite or comet. Now here are some of the ruins of Hattusis, and you notice here, if this city succumbed in a, to a violent end with war. I think these buildings would have been torn apart. There would have been evidence of warfare, and these remains just seem to be perfect blueprints of their original foundations, and these are made with just large rocks which form the foundations, and there is no evident appearance of destruction by warfare. So the comet theory or the meteorite impact theory, I think, holds a lot of legs. As you see here, we have no evidence of warfare and destruction, you know, by, you know, dismantling this town brick by brick or building by building. There is no evidence of that whatsoever. Now, going back to this website here, I just want to show you a few pics. And it has a lot of good information on this website. And once again, I will leave this link below. But they did rebuild in very modern times a castle, just so people would get an idea of what these original structures look like. And it says, a paved road in the lower city. Roads in Hattusis were unusually large and spacious, probably to allow transit to large chariots and carriages. And these are all that remain are these large foundation stones. It says, only the scattered foundations of buildings remain of what were probably large storage rooms or royal archives adjacent to the great temple in the lower city. The first excavators of the of Hattusis were surprised by the thick layer of vitrified bricks and calcinated stones, which were clearly left over by a fire so violent as to make limestone explode in fragments. And if these stones were vitrified, then there had to have been a source other than a fire of uh, a lot greater heat and here are some more of the ruins here's a castle that was rebuilt more ruins 
It says, a secondary entrance to the great temple, the giant blocks of stone, some of which weighed as much as 50 tons, still bear the marks and the cracks of a devastating fire that laid complete destruction to Hattusis. Here you see more of the remains. More remains here, and a lot of these stones here show very great aging. This one block here is 18 feet long, 6 meters long, and 2 meters tall, which makes it over 60 tons. Those are huge megalithic rocks. Here we have a core mark or a drilling circle like we have in the stones coming from ancient Egypt. They had to have some sort of uh, technology to make those perfect holes. And those drill marks are found in stones all over. And here, 20 of them mark the top of these perfectly cut, cut blocks here. Here's an entrance to a temple. And this rock shows, I guess, what they're calling vitrification. And that can only come from a nuclear blast or an impact of some... A celestial object and look at this a strange green stone lined on one side of the chamber of the great temple complex it is a cube of almost one meter by so on each side polished to achieve mirror-like surfaces the origins of this stone as well as its real purpose are a complete mystery and that is really weird I think that's pretty cool and any theories on that, leave it in the comments section. But you can see other stonework here. Very impressive stonework at ancient Hattusis. And another gate to the city here. But I will leave the link to this below. And here is that passageway. And this article talks about this structure here. And they even have a name for it. It says, this enigmatic structure is usually called a fortress or a rampart, perhaps to avoid calling it a pyramid, that is, what it actually looks like. One wonders what defensive purpose could it serve. Not only would an invading army, an invading enemy, find very conveniently located stairways leading up to the summit of the rampart, but even a large tunnel piercing it from side to side over the length of 69 meters which could have, of course, led the enemy right in the middle of the citadel, entirely bypassing the supposed rampart. Some archaeologists, of course, claim that the tunnel would have been a deadly trap to any invader, like some sort of death corridor, but there is no proof the tunnel was ever blocked. Also, one wonders why one would build a rampart with a side larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza and then cut a comfortable tunnel through its width for any invader to simply bypass it. To me, it is plain nonsense. The only reasonable explanation is that the Yerkepi, and that is a name for it, Yerkepi, served some yet obscure cultic purpose, perhaps with his supposed towers on top marking some relative calendar points which was perhaps linked to the sun or star observation. I must admit the tunnel crossing the pyramid of Yerkepi over its entire width closely reminded me of a giant telescope pointing to some distant star. Here it says the entrance to the tunnel, also called the gate of the earth on the long side of the Yerkepi pyramid. Hardly something that could have gone unnoticed, especially to an invading army. Here are some more looks at the Yerkepi structure pyramid structure. It says the outer casing is arranged on two terraces and was lined with large, light, white limestone boulders. And here is a look looking down, give you some idea of how tall this is. And here are some more megalithic work at uh, Hatasu. And these blocks kind of remind me of what you see in Peru. But once again, I will leave the link to this below. Going back on Google Earth here. Did a comet or some sort of celestial impact put an end and destroy this ancient Hittite city? Well, I think there is good evidence that that is entirely possible. We have little evidence of warfare, if any. 
these uh, original foundations appear to be in their perfect form. There seems to be uh, vitrification and other evidence of some very high intensity heat that could only have been maybe caused by an impact. But uh, the standard model of history does not talk a lot about comet impacts and uh, cataclysm and that clearly I think was the cause of the end of the ice age. So I thought this should be brought up. My channel is about lost history and uh, putting stuff out there that really has not been talked about too much. So I think this is entirely possible that ancient Hattusas was impacted by a some sort of celestial impact a long time ago, a little over 3,000 years ago, and led to the end of that civilization in that city. Hope you thought this was interesting. Yeah, have a nice day.